Hello and welcome to The Point. On the day Narendra Modi filed his nomination papers from Vadodara, a constituency he's bound to win, we focus on Varanasi, where his opponents believe he might be vulnerable. But could their divisions ensure a second victory for Mr. Modi? First, however, we shall focus on Azam Khan's bizarre claims about the Kargil War. Is he both factually wrong, but more importantly, morally repugnant? And remember, both of these are issues that could reverberate right up till the last day of voting. Now, if you've heard what Samajwadi Party leader Azam Khan said about the Kargil War, you won't easily forget it. He claims it was Muslim soldiers and not their Hindu colleagues who won the war for India. Is that a comment his party defends? Is it a sentiment that might deeply offend the Indian Army? My guests are former Army Chief General V.P. Malik, Samajwadi Party leader Madhukar Jaitli, BJP spokesperson Prakash Javdekar, the strategic affairs editor of the Business Standard, Colonel Ajay Shukla, and the well-known senior journalist Sharath Pradhan. First, however, a clip of what Mr. Khan said, just in case you missed it. <laughs> Now, Mr. Jaitley, you've heard what your senior party leader Azam Khan said in Ghaziabad yesterday. He claims that it wasn't Hindu soldiers, but Muslim soldiers who won the Kargil war. Not only is that factually incorrect, but far more importantly, it's morally repugnant. Does your party endorse or does it condemn that statement? Mr. Jaitley? Mr. Jaitley? Oh, what a point at which to lose Mr. Jaitley. All right, let me bring in Prakash Javdekar. We'll go back to Madhukar Jaitley. Mr. Javdekar, your candidate in Ghaziabad is a former Indian Army chief. He's criticized Mr. Azam Khan's comment. But today, you've also additionally announced that your party has petitioned the Election Commission. Do you also propose to take the matter up with the courts? Do you intend an FIR to begin with? It is actually the SP we should own and immediately sack Azam Khan for such a disastrous comment. It is not only factually wrong or something like that. To conceive a concept of having a division of army armed forces on the basis of religion or counting them, this is nothing but the Congress effort after the Central Committee recommendation that there mm. has to be a, I, I, a census I, I, I on the that. basis of religion. I, Mr. And this is absolutely unacceptable. I agree it's unacceptable, but my question was, you've said you're going to petition the Election Commission. I believe you've done that today. Will you also file an FIR and take this matter up legally? It's an action for suggestion. Well, that sounds like you're asking me for my advice, and I actually want your answer. So don't ask my advice. Give me your but answer. My Will answer, you take it up legally? If it is, if, if it is required, we will do everything to keep our honor and integrity of our armed forces uh, intact. What do you mean, what do you mean if it is required? Is not based on religion. What do you mean if it is required? What further... If element it is required, are you looking for before you legal. make up your mind? We have, we have, we have our legal sale, yeah. And in other words, you're saying you've sought the opinion and now of your legal election, sale. We have already complained with the EC. So you let so us see what is the response of the EC. EC, or we have asked EC to take legal action. All right. So you what is the legal response, or what is the EC's response? We'll wait for 24 hours. And after that, you'll decide whether you take legal action yourself or not. Have I understood yeah. that correctly? Yeah. All right. General Malik, yeah, absolutely. you were army chief during the Kargil war. You know that war intimately. You've written about it in great detail. How do you view Azam Khan's statement? Karan, I think um, it's a bizarre statement, a shocker statement. And it is not only deplorable, but what is worse is it has been stated with malicious intent and uh, it shows not only ignorance but uh, I would say it reflects a mindset which is dangerous for our institutions 
in our country and i do object to the kind of things that have been said about the army and particularly about the kargil war and you know i am surprised that azam khan comes from samajwadi party which is headed by an ex defense minister mr mulayam singh yadav for whom i have a lot of respect i served under him and i am surprised till now he has taken no action against somebody who has made such a statement can i it's can not i only uh, can ignorant, i ignorant it's not only ignorance but also the malicious part of it which is hurting can i interrupt and put two quick questions to you did you genuinely yeah. expect mr mulayam singh to publicly admonish someone as important to him as azam khan because azam khan in a sense guarantees the muslim votes the samajwadi party is hoping for this time round so did you really expect that or did you in your heart believe that at the end of the day politicians will be politicians and put expediency before principle no i do expect him to say and do something about it look the nation comes much before any anything else in this case the political parties and you cannot have uh, leaders who who have a mindset of this nature and which can destroy the most secular institution of your country so i do expect mr mulayam singh yadav to take action and not play politics in this kind of a stuff so you feel in a sense let down or at least disappointed by the silence from mulayam singh so far i will be disappointed if no action is taken one other quick question before i move on general malik as someone who understands the army you spent four decades in the army how would soldiers and officers particularly those serving in the army today view the comments from mr azam khan which first of all seek to deliberately divide between hindus and muslims and then secondly seek to give credit for kargil to muslims whilst explicitly denying it to hindus look, look let's not get involved in hindus and muslims i don't like to talk about that because everyone who fought kargil war was an indian we had hindus muslims christians everyone all people from all religions they not only became martyrs many of them but they also got awards and to divide them on these basis i think it is deplorable as far as i am concerned it is something which is which i think a person like azam khan should be should be some action should be taken against him all right and i think it is going to hurt the army it's going to hurt the army because when somebody talks of the last war that we fought as recently as kargil war mr sharad pradhan this comment was made in ghaziabad ghaziabad as you know is in fact at the center of an area from where the army does a lot of recruiting will this comment mm -hmm. yep. secure and perhaps cement muslim support to the samajwadi party or could it put off many people from the muslim community who look to the army as a noble career how will it in other words go down with well, the electors of ghaziabad well well i, I happen to be in this this very region i when i met uh, azam khan also this morning in rampur and uh, he was uh, trying to justify trying to uh, tell me a story that he landed into a, a colonel of the army who was traveling with him on a train today this is a different story that he said and uh, that colonel one hugged him because he was very happy that uh, azam khan was a muslim and uh, that colonel said narrated the story to him this is how he put it and and when we can when i confronted him that this was not right for him to be dividing the army on such lines he uh, he was busy i said he said tells me why are you objecting if i am praising muslim so this is the kind of it's very obvious that it is the idea is to enlist greater support of the muslims you know they have been losing out on the muslim support and they are fully aware of it after the muzaffarnagar riot samajwadi party has suffered very badly as far as the muslim can support I, is concerned and muslim support is their main base mr pradhan Sorry. let me interrupt yeah. you what you're really saying to me is that a mr azam khan has no idea of the damage he has done to the yeah. army by his thoughtless senseless comments and the fact that army officers both serving and retired resent what he said and secondly you're also saying to me that he's clearly done this for reasons of political expediency this is his way of trying to win muslim votes for samajwadi have i understood you correctly on both this uh, absolutely absolutely this reflects the desperation in the samajwadi party to get the muslim vote on which depends their future
All right. Let me let me go to Mr. Madhukar Jaitley. That link to Lucknow is back up. Mr. Jaitley, let me put to you the question that unfortunately you didn't have a chance to answer when the link broke. Does your party support and endorse or does it criticize and condemn the statement from Azam Khan? And let me point out that in your absence, former Army Chief General Malik, who served under Mr. Mulayam Singh when Mr. Mulayam Singh was Defense Minister, has roundly and sharply criticized Azam Khan. And practically everyone in the army believes that what Mr. Azam Khan has said is deeply dangerous. So I repeat my question. Does Samajwadi Party endorse Azam Khan's statement or condemn it? You see, Karan, in the, during the course of the day today, the Samajwadi Party leader, Mr. Shepal Singh Yadav, has already expressed his views regarding the statement of Mr. Azam Khan. In a nutshell, what did he say? He has what did he highest... say? Tell me what I'll, he said. I'll, 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 I'll elaborate it to you. What he has said is that he has the highest respect for the army and, the, and that the, all the sections of the society from the Hindus to the Christians to the Sikhs to the Muslims have all contributed to the secular image of the army which has not only helped the the country in the in the in the subverting or subverting of the riots, whether it was Gujarat, me. I'm whether it was you, Delhi, Mr. Jaitley. whether it was what you're not Nagar. telling me is whether you support or condemn what Azam Khan has said. You're simply saying to me that Shivlal Yadav praised the army and praised its secularism. Everyone does. Now come back to my specific question: Does the Samajwadi Party I, condemn I or endorse Azam Khan? Answer that specifically. You see. What I am saying is, now since the election commission has already issued a notice to him, I heard General Malik speaking for Mr. Uh, speaking about expecting Mulayam Singh Yadav to expect, express a view. Now since the matter has gone beyond the juriscope of the Samajwadi party, it has gone between the no, election commission me, and Mr. Azam Khan. Jetli, so Mr. now Jetli, it is for Mr. Is, Azam Khan this is glib in order, attempts to, to, in order to have a fair does, view election and a fair, commission steps fair judgment in, but it does of the, of the, of the me, I'm interrupting you, Mr. Jaitley. The election commission stepping in does not mean there is no need for the Samajwadi party to make its own view clear. And given that Mulayam Singh is proud of having served as defense minister, there's a moral responsibility on him to do so. Your silence and his silence in particular is damning both the party and no, his leader. No, we are not silent. I told you, Karan, just now that the, that the statement of the Samajwadi party leader, Mr. Shivpal Singh Yadav, has already come in the course but of the day But it's not today, a clear statement. That's what I'm it. saying to you. Shivpal Singh Yadav from the statement, as no, you no. elaborated now, it, has not that, said whether he supports is, or endorses or one condemns. Thing. Give me, a, give, me an, give me an answer that the election commission will, uh, will wait till the time the statement of Mr. Razam Khan reaches the election commission for it to take a view on that. And that will be the final view beyond the view of the Samajwadi right. party. You're clearly so not going to answer my Mr. question. Razam you're going Khan into a, a very can elaborate can attempt to avoid view. answering can it. I, I can see there? that you're embarrassed. Let me ask you to hold your peace for a moment. I'm going to go to General Malik and then to Mr. Javdekar. General Malik, you've heard what Mr. Jaitley has said. Clearly, it doesn't answer my question about whether the party supports and endorses or criticizes and condemns. All they've done is to simply reiterate that they believe the army is extremely secular. As a former army chief, are you satisfied with that response or do you think they've ducked the issue completely? Karan, you know, these are the kind of statements when they are made by politicians and politics. That is why people have no respect for the politicians today. You know, and, and the, the party must realize it. You have a person who is not only ignorant, but who makes these statements with a malicious intent, dividing the society, dividing the army, damaging these institutions. I see no reason why some action should not be taken. So there is no question of ducking. Again, I say that there are certain institutions in our country. Army is one of them, which is considered to be the most secular uh, uh, institution. So there is no reason okay. for anybody to duck and take the party line rather than the national line. In other words, in a we nutshell... should not be you're, talking at the national level. In a word, in a nutshell, you're saying to me you're not satisfied with what you've heard from Madhukur Jaitley and what he claims Shivla Ali Adil said. A quick yes or no to that, General Saab. Yes, of course, I have said that earlier also that uh, Mr. Mulay I expect Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav to take some actions. Now, Mr. Javdekar, it's your party that took the matter to the election commission. The explanation you've just heard from Mr. Jaitley, is it sufficient in your eyes to explain away this whole 
controversy or are this you is, dissatisfied with what you heard from Mr. Jaitley? Absolutely outrage. Our reaction is outrageous because this is this is not explanation. This is defending the indefensible. Okay. He, the uh, Samajwadi Party had chosen not to ask uh, apology from Azam Khan or any, take any action or say categorically that what he said was wrong. No, he what, said what they are can I can I ask a question from Mr. Javadekar? No. It's not Mr. Javdekar that yes. I want you to ask questions from. I want you to answer my question. I'm going to give you one last chance. You think you've explained the matter you away. See, the I... problem, Mr. Jaitley, is that Azam Khan has been giving interviews to this channel earlier today, which I will play for you in a moment's time, where he's staunchly and unflinchingly defended and stood by his comment. He doesn't believe he said anything wrong. So I'm going to come back to you. Are you endorsing you him? Or are you prepared to say he made a terrible mistake? Give me a I clear answer. I am saying that the election commission will take its view at the end of Forgive the day. Forgive me, it's not the election commission's view I'm asking you about. I'm asking you for your party's view. You decided, the election commission doesn't decide your view. So give me your party's view. Explain to me why Mulayam so Singh that has to be given is so the, silent. The, the view of the individual who has been served the notice is to be given to the election commission. I'm and then the election commission will decide on that view, view which will include the, par the Mr. party will Mr. abide Jaitley, by that decision. Mr. Jaitley, what part of my sentence can you not understand? I'm not asking for the election commission's view. I'm not asking for the individual concerned view. I'm asking for your party's view. I'm asking you, does your party endorse or condemn what Azam Khan said? It's a perfectly simple question. Why don't you answer it? The party's view has already been expressed earlier during the course of the day, as I said to you, that we have the highest regard for the army. And we have the highest regard for all the, that, all the tasks that are serving, going around serving in the army. Like little children. That is not the question. I know you have the highest regard for the army, and I'm grateful that you do. But you haven't answered my question whether you support what Azam Khan said or criticize it. Answer that question or are you saying to the audience that you refuse to do so? It will be unfair for me to have a view on this at this stage ah. when, the, when the notice has been served to All him. All right. It's unfair. Let us wait till the time the, the answer Thank of Mr. You. Azam Khan is served to the election commission. Unfairness to Azam Khan matters a lot more than the insult done to the Indian army. That's your value and those are your priorities. Very quickly, Mr. Sharad Pradhan, before I go to that interview that I'm very keen to play so that Mr. Jaitley can hear himself how Azam Khan stands by. The comment you've just heard from the SP leader, spokesman in fact, is that it would yeah. be unfair to comment. Does that not suggest that they care more about Azam Khan and his feelings and his sensibilities then they care about the army and the terrible hurt done to the army. It's, it's very evident, you know, that for them, their political compulsions are more important than anything else. And as we can see, it is not only Mr. Shipal Yadav, Akhlesh Yadav himself, the chief minister, at, in a rally in Pilibit today, he, he gave a similar wishy-washy explanation. And he said that uh, it is not just one particular community without saying Muslim. Everybody has contributed to the army in Kargil and all that. So he gave a similar wishy-washy because they don't have the courage to take on Mr. Mr. Azam Khan, especially at this juncture. All right. Now, when the elections are around the corner and he's the Muslim face, for them, political gains, politics is more important than any national prestige or the prestige of the army. You're absolutely right, That's Mr. Pradhan. And part. I'm going to cut now to the particular interview my colleague Rahul Kanwal did earlier today with Mr. Azam Khan. Rahul Kanwal asked Mr. Azam Khan how he defended his controversial statement. The interview has been trending all day on Twitter where it's attracted enormous attention. Here now are edited excerpts that you can see for yourself just how stubborn Mr. Azam Khan turns out to be. Azam Khan sahab, you have given a statement yesterday that in Kargil's fight, there was a role in Muslims and in Kargil's fight, there was a role in some places. No, no, I don't have to say it. I don't have to say it. I'm in the army. I'm in my father's army. I come from my own army background. In the army, it's taught that Hindu and Muslim don't have anything to say. It's a religion. It's a religion. It's a religion. It's a religion. It's a Sikh regiment. It's a Sikh regiment. It's a Gorkha regiment. मुसलमान अगर कुर्बानी दें तो आपको बुरा क्यों लगता है आप बात नहीं समझे आपने ये समझाया है पूरे देश को 
कि मुसलमानों का कोई योगदान नहीं है नहीं किसने बोला ये आपने हम बताते नहीं हमारी हिंदू से आर्मी में क्यों हमारी बात तो सुन लीजिए आपने सवाल किया हमारा जवाब आपने ये समझाने की कोशिश नहीं की देश को कि अशफाकुल्ला खां की क्या कुर्बानी है बी एम्मा की क्या कुर्बानी है सलाम मौलाना मोहम्मद को नहीं आप नहीं करने देते सब सलाम कर नहीं करने देते आप हमारी बात भी सुन लीजिए कारगिल की पहाड़ियों पर मुसलमान फौजियों ने नाराय तकबीर अल्लाह अकबर लगाकर पहाड़ियों पर चढ़ाई की दूसरी तरफ के फौजी पाकिस्तानी बाहर निकल के आए उनसे मुकाबला हुआ इन्होंने मारा पहाड़ियों को कब्जा किया मैं जानता हूं कहानी अगर अगर मुसलमान फौजी अपने वतन की सरहदों की रखवाली के लिए जान दे रहे हैं और हम ये बता रहे हैं देश को आपको क्यों बुरा लगता है सर मेरे पिता नहीं ये तो हिंदू मेरी बात सुनना नहीं नहीं मेरी बात सुनो हिंदू मुसलमान क्यों करते कोई ये थोड़ी कहता कि सिख जवान ने यह किया मतलब भारत तो की सेना ने यह अचीव किया उसको आप हिंदू मुस्लिम कलर क्यों देते हैं आजम आज हम इतना बुरा क्यों हमें नहीं लगता हमारे बहुत अच्छे पसंदीदा दोस्त हमारे तो फिर बहुत आपको ये बात क्यों बुरी लगती है आप हिंदू हैं क्या सच नहीं है आर्मी में आप हिंदू हैं ये सच नहीं है मैं तो सीखूं लेकिन आप सिख हैं ये सच नहीं है हिंदू मैं मुसलमान हूं ये सच नहीं है आप हिंदू मुस्लिम का एंगल आर्मी को क्यों देते हिंदू मुस्लिम नहीं है आपने दिया अब आप कहते रहिए मैं सवाल पूछ रहा क्या होता नहीं पर आपने कहा आप कहने से क्या होता है हमारा मंशा देश को यह साबित करना है कि मुसलमानों का क्या योगदान है और मुसलमान कहां तक जा सकता है हमने ये कहा वो तो आपने सुना और दिखाया ये क्यों नहीं दिखाया कि देश की सरहदें हम, हम हमें दो कुर्बानी देने के लिए हम सब जान दे देंगे वतन के लिए ये नहीं दिखाया आपने पर हम सब जान दे देंगे जान देने के लिए सब बराबर से तैयार खड़ा है अगर हम जान देना चाहते हैं आपसे पहले तो आपको क्या एतराज है ये बताइए इतराज है आपको नहीं कोई एतराज नहीं तो फिर आप क्यों उसको ट्विस्ट करते क्योंकि हैं आर्मी क्यों? में हिंदू मुस्लिम नहीं होना चाहिए मेरे हिसाब से आर्मी में इसीलिए आर्मी चीफ गाजियाबाद से इलेक्शन लड़ रहे हैं भारतीय जनता पार्टी से इसीलिए उन्होंने आपको जवाब दिया उन्होंने कहा कि आर्मी में हक नहीं है जवाब देने का अगर कोई मजबूत सरकार केंद्र में होती तो वो जवाब देती उन्हें आपको लगता है उनको निकाल देना चाहिए था अब पता नहीं क्या होना चाहिए था नहीं पर मजबूत सरकार होती तो क्या संदेश देना चाह रहे हैं कि वीके सिंह को उस वक्त आप होते अगर डिफेंस मिनिस्टर इंडिया के और वीके सिंह ने इस तरीके से चैलेंज किया होता प्रधानमंत्री के जनरल मलिक यू माइट नोटिस दैट इन हिज आंसर्स आजम खान इज ट्राइंग लिटिल टू मूव अवे फ्रॉम इज वेरी ओडियस हिंदू मुस्लिम कंपेरिजन एंड ट्राइंग टू सजेस्ट इन स्टेड that what harm is there is someone praises the good work done by muslim soldiers i'm not sure if it's a very convincing attempt but how did you respond to what you heard azam khan say has he convinced you that what he said was anodyne as opposed to deeply offensive no oh, you know i mean it's a mad statement that he is making the person has no clues whatsoever about the armed forces how they work they the he has no un, he doesn't understand that we all work together as a team from the smallest to the highest level of our organization and we do not discriminate on the basis of religion caste or anything else and that is the only way to fight a war and that is the only way that we can survive as an armed forces so that man has absolute no clues whatsoever i do not know what is he doing as a minister in the uh, in this uh, up state uttar pradesh state and i do not know how people have accepted him with this kind of a mindset which can only destroy our secular institutions like the armed forces can i ask you one quick question before i move on the army is not yeah. just the most secular institution that india has but probably one of the most highly regarded as well in 2002 in gujarat it was the army that restored order in 1984 in delhi it was the army that restored order is there a danger that azam khan's type of statements could create problems for the integrity of the army yes that is correct because people like him if they go about talking to people in their villages and their towns it is bound to be heard by personnel in the army and i don't like that let me also give you one anecdote this is after the kargil war and one list of awardees came to me from 12 jackali and i read that there was one captain clifford a christian there was captain amol kalya who is a hindu who was a hindu there was one Gos Muhammad Khan from Kashmir and there was one sadar gentleman four and i my remark to my colleagues my uh, staff was i said this shows secularism in our country absolutely although it was not intended but it just it just happened to be like that and those four awardees are from 12 jackali 
in which there are a large number of Muslims. Quite I right. don't know what Azam Khan is talking about. He has no clues whatsoever. And I, I deeply, I condemn that statement of his. Mr. Javdekar, listening to Mr. Azam Khan's original statement and now listening to the defense that he's put up, I got the impression that what he's ended up doing is to communalize valor, to communalize victory, and to communalize even martyrdom. Do you think that that is the great danger, that Absolutely. in every aspect he's introducing communal thought? And he is making virtue out of it. And that is very bad of it. Nobody, nobody in the country has asked. And when there was a debate on whether there should be a census, on the religious census in the army, every sane person opposed it. But that is what now he is trying to again and on the eve of election, just for votes, this is not this is not Muslims also want now. Muslims have moved ahead. They want progress. They now don't want to okay. be in that ghetto which SP and other parties, so called secular parties. I take uh, your point. In other words, in. in other words, you're saying Azam Khan doesn't even understand the Muslim electorate he's trying to woo by this amazing controversial statement. Let me bring in Mr. Madhukar Jaitley and I'm going to ask you two questions, Mr. Jaitley. First, I'm going to point out to you that in 2002, when Narendra Modi gave Hindu dead of Godhra double the compensation he gave the Muslims who were killed in Ahmedabad, MJ Akbar, who at the time was a leading editor, now he's the BJP spokesperson, had said that even in death, Mr. Modi was communalizing the Indian people. I put it to you, that is exactly what Mr. Azam Khan has also done. Even in death, he is communalizing the martyrs of Kargil. That is how deeply repugnant the statement happens to be. How do you defend No, no, it? you see, there, it, it, it is not drawing the same comparisons. Kargil was not a communal uh, riot, it was a war. And Gujarat was a communal, uh, communal tension was created because of Godra, etc. Mr. Jaitley, so Mr. Jaitley, Jaitley, no, both are Mr. Not Jaitley the same. I wasn't asking you to compare Kargil with Gujarat. I was asking you to compare the outcome of treating people differently on the basis of their religion. What you're happening and what you're seeing is Azam Khan claiming credit for the victory entirely for Muslim soldiers and suggesting that Hindus had no role to play. And that's not only offensive, it's not only factually wrong. As you heard the former army chief say, it endangers the integrity of the army. Can't you, can't you be honest enough for once earlier, and Karen. say, this was a terrible mistake. Put the army before the Samajwadi party and say it. It was a terrible mistake. The country will applaud you if you say it. Go on, I'm giving you a chance. Say it now. You see, it is, we have already said that there is no, no caste in the army. All the Indians of the country stand together in the army and fight the forces against the nation, fighting, coming up against the nation to protect the integrity and honor of the country. No, Therefore, I'm, there is no need to say that Mr. any particular Jaitley, caste was already Mr. involved. Mr. Jaitley, I'm asking a small, simple question. I want to repeat it one more time. I'm asking you to admit that Mr. Azam Khan made a terrible mistake. Admit it and the why country will applaud you. Why do you want to jump to the conclusion, Karan, before the judgment of the election commission? The matter has been recognized, the, the cognizance of the statement has been taken by the election commission. They have issued a All notice right. to Mr. Azam Khan. He is due to reply to that. Please wait for some time. Don't jump to the conclusion. Okay. We will abide by whatever decision is taken by the election commission. Including, including the sharpest of admonition. Will you also abide with an FIR if it is registered? Will you also accept arrest if it happens? All of those are possibilities. Will you accept all of that? I will only say we will cross the bridge when it comes. How Don't, convenient. Again, you are trying How to create the situation. Let me, let me put that to Mr. Sharad Pradhan. The answer you're getting there is that wonderful English cliche, I'll cross the bridge when I come, forgetting that he's in fact heading towards that bridge at the speed of a rocket. But he still doesn't seem to want to see it. Is it an acceptable response today, both technically and morally, no, well, for the Samajwadi party not to uh, say whether they support or criticize and simply to say we leave it till the election commission decides. Is that not passing the buck? 
No, that that is a very diplomatic reply, and uh, in uh, Mr. Jaitley's position, I can understand because politically he is not in a position to say whether any action could be taken or not. Knowing Mr. Azam Khan's clout in the party and knowing his, uh, you know, the kind of clout that he enjoys, nobody else does in the party. So nobody would dare to even suggest that any drastic step can be could be taken against him. Okay. And I am sure, uh, Mr. Sapar, what what he did was. To address because he was trying to run down General V K Singh, who is a BJP candidate from Ghaziabad, and he found this as best idea to convey that it is not just General V K Singh, a Hindu. You know, this is how he looks at it. It is also the Muslims who have done something in Kargil. So he was trying to appeal to the voters okay. there in his own way, and you know, his his insolent ways are known to everybody. Let me let me let me go back to General Sorry, Malik. General Malik, I want to put three quick questions to you. I'm going to ask you for short, sharp answers. First of all, you've heard from Mr. Jaitley that as far as the Samajwadi Party is concerned, they are not going to criticize Mr. Azam Khan. They're going to pass the buck and wait for the election commission to pass his judgment. They are not prepared to distance themselves in any shape or form from what Azam Khan said. Does that disappoint you as a former army chief? That they're putting politics ahead of what the army? Yes, it does. It does because Mr. Mr. Azam Khan has shown his mindset. And I don't quite agree with the statement that has been made that it is only uh, to talk against another BJP candidate. The, what, has, what comes out from here is his mindset, which is what is hurting me. My second question, as a former army chief, who has noted that this is something that could be very dangerous to the very integrity of the army, does Azam Khan owe the Indian army a full apology? I think so. And more to the martyrs from all religions who died during Kargil war. And my last question, General Malik. You were hoping that Mulayam Singh Yadav, under whom you served when he was defense minister in the late 90s, would speak out. He's chosen to be deliberately silent. In fact, some would say his silence is deafening. Are you disappointed you know, that the former minister, defense minister won't speak out? I, I, I expect a defense minister to be an extension of the military. And that is why I expect the defense, former defense minister to take some action uh, against Mr. Azam Khan for statement. Now we're joined by Mr. Ajay Shukla, who is the strategic affairs editor of the Business Standard. My apologies, Mr. Shukla. I believe we've had terrible problems trying to get the OB link up, and I apologize for the long time you've been waiting. We have time only really for one question before we end the show. We're talking about Azam Khan's comment. It's been sharply criticized by General Malik, by Sharad Pradhan, but it's been bizarrely defended by Madhukar Jaitley and in an interview that Azam Khan gave us, he insists on stubbornly standing by what he said. And I want to ask you simply this. Do you believe that the army officers today and the army soldiers would listen to what Mr. Azam Khan has said and be deeply dismayed that politics and expediency is coloring the way politicians are behaving and viewing the army? Uh, Karan, not so long ago, I was in the army myself, and I have to say, I don't think there will be any surprise at all within the army, amongst the officers, amongst the Javans, at the way that the politicians are cynically manipulating uh, emotions amongst their constituencies in order to gain narrow uh, electoral interests. They do not expect anything better from the politicians. The army, the army in this country, and increasingly so, uh, has nothing but, I mean, it, 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 it's a very strong word to use, but it despises politicians. And you're seeing over here a classic example of a former defense minister, a senior Muslim minister, uh, sort of using and whipping up these, these communal uh, sort of statements in an organization that is completely non-communal. Now, what it actually does is strengthen the BJP. Uh, every time you have an, uh, a minister like Azam Khan getting up over there and making a statement like that, True. you're strengthening the, the opposite party as well. So you're, you're, you find Mr. Prakash Javadekar very, very calm and very composed in this show. He's very happy with what is going on too. But this is exactly what the military knows and expects from its politicians. Let me leave, in a sense, the final comment to you, Mr. Jaitley. Not only have you heard practically every single person on this program 
roundly criticized Azam Khan, but you've also heard the opinion that Mr. Azam Khan's behavior has proven to many serving and retired officers that politicians are untrustworthy, that they look for small petty advantage at the cost of the deeper interests of the nation. Are you not embarrassed that your senior leader has proven to the country the very worst aspects of politicians? Answer that quickly and I'll end this particular episode so that people feel you've had the last word. You see, Karan, again, I would like to say that before we comment upon it, mm -hmm. the, it, is, it, is, it is no point discussing this again and again, that whatever he has said, we have already said we have got the highest regard for the army, not only me, the whole Samajwadi party, even, right. the, even the president of the Samajwadi party, who has himself been the defense minister, done so much with Mr. Malik himself, must be okay, knowing how much he has done for the army. How he cannot be, you is cannot discount that all Mr. that. Mr. Mulayam Singh has taken some grand stand of principle. His silence is deafening. It's the most shocking thing of this whole episode that a former defense minister and a man who's taken so much pride in saying he's been defense minister, a man who actually nurtures ambitions of ending up as prime minister in May, is entirely silent. He's put politics and expediency ahead of the Indian army. And I put it to you, and I'm sorry if this sounds emotional, but that's not something that the country would admire. Your silence is deafening. Go ahead, say something, Mr. Jaitley. Or would you rather keep quiet and answer? Uh, your your voice was a little bit cracking in between. Can you repeat your question once more, I know, please? I don't think I will, Mr. Jaitley. I think that would be just too convenient. We'll end this particular episode there. Let your silence be symbolic of practically everything you've said on this program today. My thanks to all four of my guests for joining me. And my apologies to Colonel Shukla for the delay in being able to hook him up. At least we had him in the end.